Good morning. Welcome to North Row. As you can see, we have some very special guests with us today. And I would like to welcome all of you and also to introduce our chairman, Mr. Mitchell Cohen, who will take our program from here. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning. On behalf of the entire Northboro Select Board, welcome to the beautiful Northboro Senior Center. Governor Maura Healy is a longtime friend of the town of Northboro. As Attorney General, she led the successful prosecution of a property owner causing horrible air and water pollution impacting thousands of our residents. Today, now, Governor Healy joins us to celebrate the comprehensive tax reductions she's just signed into law. As many here know, the Northboro Select Board has taken a substantial action in recent months to help seniors. This past April, I presented a town meeting article that increased the senior tax deferral income limit to what was then the state maximum. In just last month, the board unanimously approved an increase of the senior tax workout program to the maximum of $1,500. The new law increases this maximum. I look forward to the board considering and hopefully approving this increase before the end of the year. Thank you very much, Governor Healy, for giving us these important local options in reducing taxes for our most vulnerable citizens. Thank you, and now I'd like to introduce <laughs> Governor Healy. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, and thank you, Mitch, for all that you do. I met a few select uh, persons out here, and I know uh, both my dad and my stepdad were selectmen, and that's probably the toughest job uh, in the business. Maybe, maybe mayor, maybe, I don't know. You do have something to say about that, but, uh, but we appreciate the work that, that you do, all of you do in, in government. Um, so to Mitch, thank you for that introduction. To Mike Gallagher, your town administrator, great to see you again. And uh, to Lisa and everyone uh, on the team at the Northboro Senior Center, Thank you for hosting us here today. It's an honor to be with you, um, in part because I think this is just about the nicest senior center that I have seen in the entire state. And I've heard such wonderful things about it from the work that Vicki and the team do with all the cooking and, uh, and the cafe. Uh, we look forward to that on the way out. But um, just the setting, too. And, you know, I grew up in a town, lots of woods and woodland. And to think that, you know, you can think about ways to use these spaces, too, um, in ADA-accessible uh, ways is really, really exciting. And uh, I know you're the envy of, of all senior centers or wannabe senior centers. So uh, it was very intentional. We chose, Lisa, your, your site here today. Where are you? What are you hiding? Get up here. This is your show. Yeah, we're in your house. Thank you. Um, I also want to welcome Reverend Walter Lucas from the Faith Tabernacle Church in Worcester. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, members of our fabulous team, beginning, of course, with our amazing Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, who you'll hear from shortly. Also, you can clap. It's good, Tim. Um, our Undersecretary for Health and Human Services, Kiami Mahania, and Kiami has come on board with our administration, is doing incredibly important work. He spent his career running community health centers, so not big hospitals, but community health centers de delivering work right on the front lines to some of our most vulnerable in community, and it's super exciting what he's doing, including spearheading the look at what's happening with the delivery of health services here in central Massachusetts, something that is near and dear to our heart, I know matters a great deal to each and every one of you. We can't do anything without the partnership and the support of our colleagues in the legislature. And today we have your representatives, Representative Meg Kilcoyne with us, Representative Kate Donahue. We're grateful for all the work that they do. I know we all uh, want to acknowledge Senator Robin Kennedy, who wishes she could be here, but actually has to be back in the State House because she's chairing an important hearing today. But thank you uh, for coming out. We're here today because we just did something that hadn't been done in a very, very long time in this state. And that is, we passed tax cuts, tax relief. <laughs> it's, 
It's been well over 20 years that we've seen tax relief in this state. And here's why it's important. It's important to me and the LG because we know that it is incredibly stressful to be confronted with high costs, whether it's groceries or gas bills or electric bills or, you know, how you're going to buy presents for your grandkids. I mean, all of this mounts up. And we're going through a time of higher higher pricing right now and inflation. And so people across the state are really feeling the pinch. And we saw this as a great opportunity in our state to provide relief to people who need it most. And so here's what we, here's what we did. Uh, and this is, uh, this is very exciting and also historic. I'll tell you how we're putting money back in your wallets or your pocketbooks, okay? We're doing it in a few ways. We did it in a lot of ways, but I'm gonna speak to some things that I think this audience would care particularly about. The first thing is something called the Senior Circuit Tax Break, uh, the Breaker Tax Credit, okay? And what this means is that you're gonna go from getting a credit of $1,200 to $2,400. We doubled it, we increased it by 100%. That's money that you're gonna get back every single month. Uh, in your pocket, and we expect it's going to help 100,000 seniors across Massachusetts. And this is if you pay a mortgage and also if you rent, because if you rent, we, we've got a renter's deduction for you that's going to increase a deduction from $3,000 to $4,000. Again, money back in your pocket. For homeowners, we've also increased what you can earn in the Senior Property Tax Volunteer Program. Well. What is this? We've got a lot of great people of goodwill doing volunteer work in their cities and towns. We appreciate that, and we think they should be rewarded for that in terms of tax relief. So we're increasing um, to $2,000 off of your property tax bill by participating in that program, $2,000. Then there's something called the estate tax, which is on a lot of people's minds. That's the tax that your family pays on what you may pass on to them. And until now, our estate tax was at a lower level. People were taxed sooner for a lesser amount than a whole bunch of other states. And we wanted to change that. And so now um, we've changed that by raising the cap and lowering the estate tax. So before, if you, if you owned a home or a business, it was a lot harder to pass that on to your loved ones, uh, including your hard-earned savings. Um, and now we've changed that because we think it's really important that people have that ability to, to pass on money to their, to their families. It's also going to make for better planning decisions for people. And, you know, I really want, um, I want all of our seniors to be able to retire and live in Massachusetts. That's very, very important to me and the team. And we don't want people going to other places simply because of, planning and a calculus they're doing around something like the estate tax. So we changed that uh, to make our state more affordable and also more desirable. Because as I say, we really, you raised families here, you ra built businesses here, you built community here, and we want you to see out, you know, um, your retirement right here in Massachusetts. Now let's talk about children and grandchildren. Um, as we get ready for Halloween and uh, all that is to come. I don't know if anybody, I was at Spirit this weekend myself. Um, that was quite overwhelming. Um, uh, I still don't know what I'm going to be. Um, but I'll tell you what we did for, for, for children and grandchildren. We increased something called the Child and Dependent Tax Credit. And this is a big deal. We raised it from $180 to $310 this year, and it's going to go to $440 next year. And that is per child, per dependent. It'll get up to $440 for every child, every dependent in your household. And we also remove what used to be, you used to be capped at two kids. You couldn't get a credit for more than two kids or two dependents. And we know that that doesn't work for a lot of families. So we got rid of that cap. Now you get a credit for everyone in the household. Um, and that's going to mean hundreds of dollars going back to families with children and to people who take care of seniors or disabled family members. It also means that Massachusetts is now the most generous child and dependent tax credit state in the entire country. I am really proud that we were able to do that. 
Finally, we also cut taxes on things like lead paint abatement, uh, septic tank replacement. I'm sure some of you, unfortunately, have had to confront that. Um, it's pretty pricey these days, and so there's a significant tax credit towards that. Um, also uh, know that we are putting a lot of, of investment, a ton of investment into housing. We'll have more on that soon. But building housing, building affordable housing, it's a top, top priority for our administration. So we know there's more work to do, um, and we're going to keep attacking these high costs from multiple angles. And, uh, and again, you know, so many of you, you've worked so hard for so long, and we just want to make sure that you're taken care of, and I'm proud that the, of, the, of the package that our administration and the legislature, legislature was able to deliver. Um, I'd now like to bring up our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, who uh, I know has a special place in, in her heart for seniors, and that is Kim Driscoll. Thank, thanks, Governor. I have some costume ideas for you. <laughs> Former mayor of Salem, we saw all kinds of costumes, so it's really good. And uh, so grateful to be up with all of you and just echo the governor's comments regarding what a beautiful senior center you have. I was saying on the way in, we worked close to a decade to try and build a new senior center. We call it a community life center in Salem. It was never the right place or the right time, and it, I was glad to get it done. But this is, this is just stunning, the light, the opportunity to bring people together. It's uh, exactly uh, what a community needs to do to show their commitment to you know, what I always consider the generation that helped pay for all the schools and all the other things we need in town. So glad to be with all of you. And really, um, you know, share why we think these tax cuts are so important to Massachusetts and what we think it benefits in terms of the people behind them. The governor and I have the great privilege to travel around the Commonwealth. You know, 351 cities and towns, all corners, all places, all unique and special in many ways. And the number one thing we hear about, frankly, no matter where we are, is just the high cost of living. A lot of that's tied to housing for sure. But we've seen over the course of the last you know, year to year and a half just rising prices really making it difficult to make ends meet. And one of the reasons we wanted to make sure we talked about these tax cuts is to make sure folks knew about them and they took advantage of them. Only 80% of the people who qualify for the earned income tax credit is one example. 20% of folks who don't qualify or who qualify never file, never take advantage of it. Things like that happen, and we want to try and avoid that. These resources are so vital, not just to the individuals who will benefit from them, whether they're working families or older adults, um, but we also know it's going to help contribute to dollars going back in local, the local economy. We saw during the, the pandemic when additional dollars were available as part of this childhood-dependent tax credit that, that families spent it at the grocery store. Um, I just came back from visiting my dad, who turned 90 this year. He's a Navy veteran. Doing pretty well, slowed down a little bit, but we both share a love of Thomas's English muffins, and he was a chef. He, he was a chef in the Navy, right? We like Thomas's English muffins with apricot jam. He got me hooked on that, right? And he, he used to regularly call me up to let me know where all the sales were happening for Thomas's English muffins. There's always sales for Thomas's English muffins. Thank you. That's a lot of phone calls, right? Um, but the reason I shared that is because we also would talk about just we buy the same things every week, yet the cost, the bill at the end at the cashier is a lot more expensive. And I think people are experiencing that. These tax dollars are designed to help make sure there's a little bit extra of money available to help pay for the things you need as we've seen rising costs. And that contributes to something positive for working families, but for age-friendly communities. I was really proud as mayor of Salem to support one of the Commonwealth's first age-friendly plans for our municipality. We want to make sure Massachusetts is an age-friendly state. What better way to do that than reducing costs for older adults, helping ensure you've got the resources you need when you need them to make the sort of investments that you can. And I'm not talking about a Roth IRA. These dollars are going back into uh, areas where we're going to make ends meet, making Massachusetts more affordable. We know that there are higher costs uh, today than there were a year ago and a year before that. And being able to put money back in people's pockets that will go back into the local economy, we think goes a long way to making Massachusetts more affordable, uh, more competitive, and frankly, more equitable. And that's our goal in, in this role. And so grateful, again, to be with all of you. And we want to make sure as we talk about these, these reductions in costs, 
that you share them with your friends. We're here at the Senior Center because we think there are opportunities for us to spread this message. Make sure everyone takes advantage of these tax cuts, whether it's the estate tax or earned income tax credit or the senior circuit tax break or the work off program, which does so much in terms of helping our communities. So thanks for what you're doing every day, but thank you for joining us here today and helping spread the message. These tax cuts can make a big difference. Appreciate it. Thanks, LG. All right, Reverend Lucas, followed by Diane Sandman. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It does give me great pleasure and honor to be here uh, on behalf of our wonderful governor, Governor Healy, and our Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. I was humble when they asked me would I come and speak. I said, well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> so um, in my research, I had spoke with Elise. And in my research, I found out that um, the governor and the governor's council, lieutenant governor, have been working so hard for so long. And I think that I have to get this out of me. They did something incredible. Here's what they did. They introduced this bill to the floor in March. Seven months later, in October, on October 4th, she actually pinned the bill into law. Think about that for a second. Seven months later. So that means that if they introduced it in March, that means that prior to that, they had to have been working for a long time trying to make sure they had all of their ducks in a row so when they presented it, it had substance. So just for that alone, I think we ought to give our governor and our lieutenant governor another hand. <laughs> so again, my name is Pastor Walter Lucas. I'm the pastor of the Faith Tabernacle Church in Worcester. Um, and I actually work also with the CMAA, the Central Mass Agency on Aging. And uh, I'm actually the uh, outreach uh, coordinator for the faith-based initiative for the grandparents raising grandkids. So, uh, and I, I thankful, I'm thankful that my boss is here, Dr. Moses Dixon, and uh, he has really pushed us out to get this initiative out, just like we're doing now for the governor. This information about the tax cuts has to get out because she just made the point that most of the people, about 20% of the people who are actually eligible for it, they don't use the tax credit because they don't really know about it. So that's why we're pushing so hard now to be able to get out and let the people know this is what is available for you. Just like the grandparents raising grandkids, this is what is available for you. And we're seeing a big difference in everyone's lives. So. I just wanted y'all to also, we also are doing uh, the uh, vaccines. We're getting that initiative out all over, the, all over the Commonwealth, trying to get what we can done with the people who really, really need it. So today, again, I am truly honored to be here with the governor and the lieutenant governor and all of you, and let's keep working hard to make this great. Good morning. Can you see me over the podium? <laughs> I'm Diane Sandman. I'm from East Brookfield, and I'm, I've been retired now for two years, um, but I am serving on the board of Central Mass Agents on Aging with Dr. Dixon. Um, so for 40 years, I worked as a legal advocate at Community Legal Aid, um, serving seniors in Central Massachusetts um, with legal issues. Now, most of my clients were really living on the financial edge, not really having substantial in income to meet their daily needs, um, which often ended up with legal problems, either eviction or um, loss of benefits. Um, and I've seen with my clients that it can take, since they don't usually have, they have limited income, they don't usually have a financial cushion to 
plan for unexpected expenses, you know, be a, a major car repair or, or a vet bill or, you know, medical expense. And that can really cause financial catastrophe for people of limited income. And um, so I'm really pleased that this bill is really providing some benefit to our most vulnerable citizens, which I am now, um, and in the Commonwealth um, to help with um, tax breaks and to put more income back in their pocket. I know one of the provisions that I'm happy about, which I used to tell my clients about, most people don't know about the senior, the circuit breaker tax uh, credit, and they might think that you have to have a tax liability, you might have to have taxable income in order to qualify for the credit, but actually um, you don't. So all you have to do is file an income tax return and the tax, um, the circuit breaker tax credit form. And that was giving people up to $1,200, but now as Governor Healy mentioned, it was doubled to $2,400. So before, a lot of people didn't qualify because it's, there's a calculation based on your um, property taxes and water sewer bills or your rent and your income. So a lot of people didn't qualify um, for the credit. But now with it's being doubled to $2,400, I think a lot more people are going to qualify. And I would encourage everybody to get the word out that seniors should, you know, look to see if they qualify and to apply for the credit. Because that puts, even if you don't have a tax, you don't owe a tax to the state, you can get money back. So that puts money back into their pockets, maybe could help somebody with some catastrophic um, financial expense that they don't have the money, you know, to cover. The other thing that I think is, is was a great provision in the tax bill is the rental um, deduction increase, which is going to help a lot of people who, you know, reduce their tax liability on their state income taxes. And then I'm very excited and hopeful about the, um, the um, housing, the tax incentive for the development of affordable housing, uh, that provision. And I'm hoping because affordable housing is one of the biggest issues in at least central Massachusetts. We all know everything has gone up. All the costs of goods have gone up. The housing costs have skyrocketed. Um, health costs have gone up. And there isn't any enough affordable housing for people who can't afford the private rents. I mean, if you're living on a Social Security benefit, you're not going to be able to afford private rent in, in Central Mass anyway, probably in the eastern part of the state as well. So there is there are no vacancies, at least when I was doing the work as a, as a legal advocate uh, up to two years ago, we I was helping people who were being displaced from housing um, either due to eviction or, or other reason, and who could not afford to find a private apartment, couldn't afford the rent, and there was nowhere for them to go because there weren't any vacancies in any of the public housing or the um, local housing authority apartments. Um, so it caused a lot of people to become homeless, or they might have to move in with family, or sometimes people would have to go into long-term care um, because they would either that or be on the street before they would need to go into long-term care. So, you know, the need for housing is very critical in Massachusetts. So I'm very hopeful that this increased tax incentive will really help to develop more affordable housing for, the, for our vulnerable seniors. So um, I appreciate, I, I think that um, any... Any bit that helps seniors and puts more money back into their pocket is, is going to help them and, and to give them that little cushion and prevent them from potentially financial catastrophe. So I'm very, very pleased about this bill and how it benefits the seniors in, in the Commonwealth. And, and I do appreciate it, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. And, and um, hopefully um, there might be more to come in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Meg Kilcoin and Kate Donahue. Uh, many of you know us already. We're your state representatives. Um, but we just briefly wanted to thank the governor and lieutenant governor to coming out to Northboro 
to celebrate these, uh, these very critical tax relief. Uh, this is a, a legislation that was uh, over three years in the making. The House and Senate couldn't quite get it done in the summer of 2022, uh, though we did vote on it. Um, and I think it took a new administration to come in to make sure we could get it over the finish line. So, so grateful to be here with you, all of you today. Um, I remember being here in 2020 in Northborough, talking to families, seniors in particular, about how much they wanted to stay in this community and live in this community, and literally talked about issues such as the estate tax. These were people that lived here, maybe bought their house in the 70s, 80s, or before, that worked so hard for maybe 50, 60 years and wanted to be able to take that hard-earned, their life's work, really, and share it with their families that oftentimes included not just kids, but grandkids or even great-grandkids. And so to be here today to celebrate this with all of you is, is truly an honor, and I'm honored to do this work with Rep. Donahue and Senator Kennedy, who, again, wishes she could be here, was um, uh, unfortunately has to be in the State House for critical work, but we're really lucky to uh, be in partnership with her and the administration to, to help uplift not just Northborough, but every community in the Commonwealth. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to take a quick second, since this is about tax breaks for seniors, to remind people I am a senior citizen. Um, I was elected to the legislature, at age, legislature as a legislator at age 68, and I am proudly the oldest incoming legislator this session. Thrilled to work with younger colleagues like... Um, um, Meg Kilcoyne, Representative Kilcoyne, has been a wonderful mentor and thrilled to share this district with um, Share Northborough with Rep Kilcoyne, Senator Kennedy, and the wonderful people in town government here in Northborough. Thank you all for being here. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, we have an opportunity for some uh, questions on topic, if there are any. Well, uh, from the beginning, affordability has been right at the top of the agenda, and we're working to drive down costs. And you know there's some things that we can control and other things we can't control. We can't control monetary policy and all of what's happening with inflation, but what we can do is focus on your needs and how we can deliver some relief. And that's in a couple of ways. At the top of the agenda was tax relief, and I'm really proud of the bill that we signed into law just a couple weeks ago. There's always work to be done, but this is incredible progress in an important direction, helping uh, our seniors, helping parents, helping families, helping renters, um, helping those who are caring for those aging in the home. Um, it also provides important incentives, too, to develop housing, which is probably the, the second pillar of affordability right now. The cost of rent, the cost of housing are high in this state and across the state, across the state. And so, you know, we're lucky to live in a state that is so great in so many respects. We protect people's civil rights. We protect their voting rights. We go after people when they pollute the air and the water because we think that you should be able to, to live in healthy ways free of toxins. We make sure that people have access to world-class education and access to health care, which is not something that all states do. So we're a great place to live, but we're great if you can afford it. And, you know, I grew up in New Hampshire, okay? And I understand the difference between Massachusetts and New Hampshire in terms of what's available to residents, particularly when they need it most. But to make sure that people are staying here, we need more housing, and that's why we made Secretary of Housing a new uh, cabinet position within our office. It's why we've um, set about with really strong targets, not only in the investments through the budget, but also through this tax cut. And soon, we hope to be out with a housing bond bill that will be absolutely historic. So it's those things, tax relief and driving down housing costs. As an administration, we're going to continue to focus on high costs uh, because we know that families across the state are feeling it. I think, I think we're high for some things, and we're not high for other things. And as I say, there are a lot of great things about Massachusetts. I think we're the greatest state in the country. We offer an incredible amount of people. And 
Also, at a time of a lot of division and divisiveness, we have an ability to get things done. Those of us in state and local government, irrespective of party, we're working together, we're getting things done, and we're delivering. We delivered a historic budget with significant investments in education and workforce, for example. We've got this tax relief package that we just delivered, you know, and that's something that's important, I think, too, in this day and age. That's a good point, Diane. We're one of the states that do not tax Social Security benefits, and other states do. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. You going to come on the road with us? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, thank you. We're happy to hang here for a little bit. Um, and anything you want to say, Doctor? No? No? Okay. He's the man. He's watching all health care disparities, you know, RSV, what's happening, what's happening with COVID, everything. So we want to make sure people have access uh, not only the vaccinations that they need, but um, other health care needs as well. Thank you all for being here, and, welcome, and thank you again, Lisa, for welcoming us to this beautiful senior center. Thanks.